Grade 12s, we're looking at Life Sciences Paper 2 from November 2022. And we're going to be focusing on Section B, Question 2, which is going to total 50 marks. So it's a third of your paper. And remember that in Section B, you are going to be unpacking far more, in, in far more detail than you did in Question 1. So our first Question 2.1 says the diagram below represents transcription during the process of protein synthesis. And here we've got the diagram of transcription. Here we've got our DNA template, one of the strands of DNA. And here we've got the mRNA, which is the copy of that DNA strand. Our first question says, name the part of the cell where this process occurs. So we have, in terms of protein synthesis, we have two different processes. One of those processes is called transcription, which is the copying of the gene. The other is called translation, which is where we translate or change the language of the organic molecule that we're looking at from a nucleic acid into a protein. And these two processes happen in different parts of the cell. So we're asked the part of the cell where this process of transcription takes place. I want you to remember that you've got a cell membrane and you've got a nuclear membrane with the DNA inside the nuclear membrane. And on the outside, you've got the cytoplasm. When we're looking at transcription, we are looking at the copying of the DNA. And that happens inside the nucleus. Our DNA is far too valuable and important to move out of the nucleus. So copying the DNA takes place actually inside that nucleus. Whereas translation happens here in the cytoplasm. So I've given you far more information that you need than you needed to answer this question, but the answer is transcription happens in the nucleus. You have to identify sugar X and nitrogenous base Y. Let's go back up to the diagram. We have to identify that sugar and that nitrogenous base. Remember that the sugars in our two different kinds of nucleic acids are going to be different. In RNA, the R stands for ribose because RNA is ribonucleic acid. And the ribo part comes from the sugar name ribose. In DNA, we know that DNA's proper name, if we expanded the abbreviation, it would be deoxyribonucleic acid, which means that this sugar is deoxyribose. Turning our attention to this nitrogenous base Y, we know that there is complementarity of nitrogenous bases. And in DNA, adenine always bonds with thymine. But this is RNA. So this nitrogenous base is not going to be thymine. 
because there is no thiamine in RNA, instead it is uracil. So we've got our answers for X and Y, deoxyribose and Y is uracil. And now we're asked to tabulate two differences between transcription, which is what we were seeing in this diagram, and a completely different process called DNA replication. And DNA replication, remember, is when we have one strand of DNA that opens up or unzips, and we are going to form a new strand of DNA using the original DNA strand as a template. And at the end of that process, we are going to have two chromatids held together by a centromere. So DNA replication is going to take place just before cell division. But transcription and DNA replication tend to confuse some students at times. And you don't always know if what you're looking at is DNA replication or transcription. So let's look at tabulating two differences between these two processes. And you'll see that it's out of five, which means you get two marks for each difference and one mark for tabulating correctly. And that is so simple. You don't have to know anything about life sciences. You just have to draw a table properly and you've got your mark. But let's draw our table. The table must have headings for our columns. So our one column is going to show transcription. And the other is going to show DNA replication. And we're going to have a heading for our table. Differences, I'm doing it in shorthand now, differences between transcription and DNA replication. You write it out in full, you underline it neatly with your ruler. So we have to get two differences. Well, the first thing that we're going to see uh, relates to what it looks like. I told you the DNA replication, the DNA opens up under the influence of enzymes into what we call a replication fork. And new DNA bases are laid down. And this will continue all the way up the molecule. We often use that word unzip to say that the entire molecule opens up and we're left with replicated DNA molecules. So in DNA replication, we have the formation of a replication fork where eventually the whole, the whole DNA molecule from the start to the end, the whole DNA molecule will unzip. Transcription, remember, we have the DNA, the double DNA strand, and there are different genes along the DNA strand. And we focus only on one gene during transcription. We need to copy just this one gene. Think of the DNA as a recipe book, grade 12s, with a whole lot of recipes in it. If you want to copy the recipe for chocolate cake, you're only going to go in the recipe book, ah, chocolate cake, and you'll copy that recipe. You will not copy the whole book. And in exactly the same way, this gene is a recipe for something. So, or for uh, the structure of a polypeptide, 
To be precise, when we undergo transcription, we only open the DNA at the site of one gene. And we call this a transcription bubble. So we can see that there's a difference between a transcription bubble, right, there's our bubble, compared to a replication fork. The transcription bubble at one gene only. Not at this gene. We're not interested in it. Not at that gene. So we don't need the DNA to open the entire DNA strand. We just need our nitrogenous bases to temporarily break their nitrogenous bases apart from each other and we're going to lay down complementary RNAs uh, nucleotides and then that RNA is going to break away and our transcription bubble will disappear. It will disappear. So transcription is only going to be temporary and once that bubble closes, it's over and it's still going to be one DNA. Whereas in DNA replication, it's permanent. Once we've opened up that DNA strand and made a copy of it, we're going to have two DNA strands. All right, another difference, we are only asked for two, so you should only give two, but another difference is this transcription is going to result in mRNA. This process of DNA replication is going to result in two identical DNA strands. You will get one mark, for each correct difference and one mark for your heading and the way in which you've constructed your table. That is how you will get maximum marks for that question.